I think we're going to go uh, get going to respect everybody and respect the time. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ami Kassar for Multifunding. Glad to do this. Um, this idea generated uh, from a post I posted out on EO uh, past and present message boards over the holidays, just asking for thoughts and ideas about different productivity apps that people used, and that conversation generated a lot of interest. And then the I, idea came out that we will uh, let members of our community uh, do short uh, webinars, but short presentations for each of us um, so we can see what they're doing and how they're doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have five presentations today, each for about eight minutes. And then we will open it up for Q&A for as long as people want to last. Um, this will be recorded and we will share this recording with everybody at the end. I want to just take a minute and let each of the presenters just introduce themselves. Jeremy, say hello and tell us who you are, where you're from. Hey everyone, um, Jeremy Weiss here. I am in EO Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> we, I run Rise 25. We uh, launch and run podcasts for businesses. See. Great. Thank you so much. Tom Bojarski, say hello. Hi there. And this is Tom Bojarski. I'm out of Charlotte, North Carolina. No longer an EO, but I was an EO 21 years, serial entrepreneur, built a couple tech companies, and now do coaching uh, and advisory services. Great. Thank you so much. Libby Rothschild, say hello. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. I'm going to put my LinkedIn in the chat so we can connect. I'm the founder of Dietitian Boss. I'm a registered dietitian by trade, and I show dietitians how to start and grow an online business. I was in EO for three years. I'm expecting in two weeks, so I'm taking some time off of EO, but um, we use um, completely virtual, so happy to share how we use some of the tools to help grow our business. Thank you so much. Genevieve Boss, say hello, please. Hey, I'm Genevieve Boss. I'm in the EO Atlanta chapter. I've been in EO for 15 years and through multiple starts um, and sales of these and now in a new AI company. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. There, are Wes Matthews, uh, EO Detroit, 10 years, uh, started, sold a digital marketing company. Now, simply put, we're essentially fractional CMOs. I'm going to show everybody Trello and how we use that for our business. Awesome. Okay, folks, without further ado, we're going to run into the eight-minute sessions or thereabouts. If it's a little less than eight minutes, that's okay. We'll see how these our friends uh, use these apps. And then we'll open up the floor and anyone who has questions can ask them. So um, we're going to start with Jeremy with ClickUp. Jeremy, the screen is yours. Take it away. Awesome. I'll share. Um, so like I said, our use case, we have an agency in um, Rise 25. So we use it for a lot of different things. I know people are going to be talking about, uh, we've used Asana heavily and we moved from uh, Asana to ClickUp, which is great. Um, but we just hit up some upper limits of some of the form functions in Asana. So we switched to ClickUp. Uh, but all of them are good as long as your team actually uses them. Um, so um, some of the ways we use ClickUp um, for client onboarding and active clients. Um, so I took some screenshots here because we have some you know sensitive client information. But this we use this account dashboard. Um, this is set up in ClickUp. So we have the name of the client, uh, what phase they're in. So you can see the onboarding phase and the active phase. Um, we have the client there. We have the assignment of who's the project manager, who's the other team members that are involved. Um, as you look through through the columns um, there. So, um, you know, through the name, the project manager, we know who's assigned. And then we we, we use Slack, but like <clears throat> we want to keep track of things and we, we make specific comments and tag people within that particular client account. Um, and then there's, there's a lot of um, other fields that we have. So we can see at a glance, is this person scheduled with their strategist or not? And we, we run two weekly meetings that are around an hour um, and run through all of the onboarding clients and all of the active clients. So we can check through easily um, who is you know from us. We want to make sure they're scheduled with the strategist. So we roll through this. Are they scheduled for a thought leadership? Since we do podcasts, we will um, schedule to interview them for their podcasts and then publish date. And there's other things within their package. So at a glance, you can kind of see the clients, who's in the onboarding phase, who's in the active phase, um, as well, and keep track of 
the different elements of that particular case and what's in their package. And if people, any, any other, any field that we need to keep track of, we can keep track of in this particular, um, you know, this board itself um, for onboarding active, obviously for semi-active and inactive. So from a follow-up perspective, if a client becomes semi-active, uh, they're producing less or they're inactive, we um, keep them in the dashboard, but um, we set up follow-up dates in the future um, to check in. And so we use it for the semi-active and inactive clients as well. Um, from integration to get info from clients, this is key for us because we need a lot of information from clients. They're submitting podcast episodes. Um, we need files. So we uh, created a dashboard um, and that our clients log into. Um, and members at Rise 25, I'll kind of show you. This is mine. Um, so when they come in here, and, and when a client's ready to upload an interview, and that could be for whatever your company does, if you need information from the client, we have um, integrated um, this form for each client. So this form here is mine. So when I'm submitting an episode to our team, because I'm treated like a client, this is a, a form from ClickUp right here. And so when I submit the name of my guest, the website, and all this other information here, and I hit submit, um, our team, that's automatically assigned, different tasks are automatically assigned to those team members to start to work on that episode. So immediately when that comes in from the client, it's automatically assigned to people. Um, they can view that as well. So like I submit this, um, if I go to my episode list, I could automatically see what I submitted in this field. So I can see what episodes, when it's being published, et cetera. when they've submitted it, but we can also, uh, it's also assigned to, you know, 15 different people to start working on different pieces. So it's good for the client. It's good for us. So this is how we integrate ClickUp inside of getting information from, uh, from clients. Um, and also, so they can visualize what they submitted as well. Also, obviously with any project management tool, um, regular tasks, you know, um, we say, you know, with any project manager tool, if it's not in, in ClickUp or whatever you use, Asana or Monday, it's never going to happen, right? So because each task gets put in, gets assigned a person and gets assigned a due date. That's it. Okay. So for the regular tasks, you know, if I have a task or someone, I mean, I kind of my assistant, if I have a task, I make sure she assigns it to me within ClickUp. But Obviously, I don't want, I want as little as humanly possible assigned to me, but um, so assigned to someone else. But you can see here, I can pull up, this is my my inbox here um, in inside of ClickUp, and I can go to today and yesterday, and you can see there's tasks there. Most of the time, if it's assigned to me, I want it kind of assigned to someone else, but it should be assigned. So I can just keep track of everything I'm um, assigned to. I had a meeting uh, this morning with a team member. We had to go through a bunch of things. They're instructed, they have ClickUp open. So I'm like, hey, we need to send this email to this person, this, to this, this. They need to just enter it into ClickUp as we're talking, assign it to themselves and put the due date for today so we don't lose track of anything in a particular meeting. So just regular tasks um, that need to be got, need to be done. Uh, the, the other thing we use it for is quarterly meetings. So, um, or any meetings for that matter. So this is a screenshot. We have content team meetings. We have customer service meetings. We have regular meetings, but we have quarterly team uh, meetings with every um, team member. Um, and so you can see here um, which ones are in progress. We can see which ones have been done and they enter the, um, once they have the team meeting or the quarterly meeting, they enter the notes in the comments um, so that, at, you know, the person can see it. We can see it. We can go back to see all the previous quarterly meetings that were done. So we use it for all our team team meetings, but specifically, you know, ones that we want to see uh, and track um, ongoing. We use it as a pipeline for clients in different phases. So like we have a, a blueprint that we do with clients where when they come on, we're doing a full plan before we even do a podcast. And there's components of that full plan. The full plan kind of is comprised of us creating assets, a spreadsheet. It's also doing three sessions so we want to track them and make sure they're on track to complete all the sessions and that we're on track. So you can see there when someone comes in for their, um, they pay for a plan, there's a to-do column and then our team creates a spreadsheet 
And then we have to fill in the spreadsheet for the prep. And then we schedule the blueprint with the client. So that's the next phase. And then session one is complete, session two, session three, and then on. So we track the client and make sure they're on track through this phase. Now we, you know, you could use this for in general, um, uh, for any pipeline for that matter. Uh, so there's again, a lot of uses. Um, so if you have questions, um, Jeremy at rise25.com and, um, I'll put my LinkedIn in the chat, but, um, hopefully that's helpful. Jeremy, thank you so much. Appreciate you. And now we're going to hand the team over to Tom. Uh, who's going to talk to us about monday.com. Tom, thanks so much. Great. Um, let me get my screens up here. Everybody see my slide of the person that needs help? Yes, we can see Good. your screen. Super. So I tripped into this whole thing um, as, as a business coach and advisor I found that a lot of my clients um, were using spreadsheets to manage, you know, companies that did up to 100 million in revenue, drowning in emails. Probably the most important problem I noticed was you'd have, you know, quarterly strategy sessions, meetings, and I called it the who farted effect. Everybody would show up, nothing would have been gotten done. Um, the tasks, the projects, the KPIs weren't kept eye level and aware daily, so on and so forth. Everybody's meetings were inefficient. They're coming in to report stuff out rather than really um, coming in to solve problems and create strategies and, and you know move the, the needle forward, so to speak. And then just a lot of manual and people intensive types tasks. So I wanted to solve that for them. I actually started out with Asana and I moved over to Monday just because I felt like Monday had a more robust automation environment. That may not be um, the case anymore. My my knowledge of Asana is dated. I've been helping clients implement Monday for the last couple of years. So, and again, at the end of the day, I want what's best for the client. So this is not by any means this versus something else today. I just want to give you an idea of what Monday.com is and does. I'm going to quickly jump into a demo of some real case scenarios in a minute, but I kind of put monday.com into these four buckets. Number one, project and task management, being able to see all of your, basically getting visibility in your organization into what people are working on, what tasks there are, what projects, able to prioritize things, um, and using dashboards and wizards, which you're going to see to basically slice and dice that information to come up with quick ways to view what's going on. Probably its strongest piece is collaboration. And people, in my opinion, use monday.com for two reasons. One is it's pretty, it's very colorful. Um, and so people enjoy and like using it. It's very easy to use. And second is the collaboration that's built in and the communication is very social media like, which you'll see. So you have the ability to at mention people. You can create quick uh, posts on on what's being worked on, replies, and believe it or not, um, everybody loves animated gifs and and emojis. It really makes the work environment fun, uh, which I, I used to downplay, but it really works. And and that's one of the key features. No matter which of these solutions or another solution that, that you end up going with down the road. Uh, the key piece is getting people to use it and keeping standards. That's the trick. And uh, just to be clear, too, I consider this a group tool, not a personal productivity tool. I probably wouldn't use Monday just for if you're looking for an individual tool. This is clearly a product design for groups. Um, I mentioned the automation, which I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of, of, of what it can do. And that automation is uh, low code, no code. So ordinary people can basically build out steps into it. And then off the shelf, it's integrated with 250 software applications and middleware uh, included all the ones that um, you may use like Zapier or make.com. And then last, and this is an area it's barely weekend, but this is a focus of monday.com this year, which is knowledge based, the ability to put all of the, the organization's knowledge into a central place to get it. So I'm going to jump over and show you some of my uh, clients. 
and how they use it. Um, if you're EOS people or Gazelle people or whatever, you'll first off notice everything's organized in, into workspaces. So you notice for this client, they've got a leadership team. They have three or four divisions, including admin and accounting. And on the left-hand side, everything in Monday is organized into boards. So what you're seeing on the left-hand side <clears throat> are the boards that I have access to. They don't use rocks. They use the concept of wildly important goals. This particular board is, is their wildly important goals for a quarter last year. Um, and you'll quickly see that each board is organized into groups. So uh, the project name, if it's grouped according to project or separate tasks, then the individual tasks, the owners, the priorities, status, date, and comment. All of this is very quickly and easily configurable by just clicking an add column. And they have a bunch of built-in columns as well as uh, columns you can create. You do have the ability with the right license level to do things like formulas and do calculations, which is uh, important because a lot of people, they're moving from perhaps using spreadsheets to manage a lot of these tasks and things into this world. And that's the one piece that they want to carry over is calculations. Um, I mentioned the group collaboration. So if we uh, quickly look for, we click the balloon, you can see some collaboration, uh, some some basically some communications that I had with team members as I was helping them implement Monday.com. Um, it's very quick, quick and easy to like. Of course, the emojis I talked about, you can reply, you can do everything in line or create your own. On the flip side, where am I seeing these things? I've got a multitude of ways to see my app mentions or the communications. One is you, you can subscribe to a daily email that'll be sent to your inbox every day, summarizing all the things that you're interested in that have happened throughout the day. You can look in your notifications at the top pretty quickly. You have an inbox where you can get a lot more granular into what types of things that you wanna see that are happening and so on and so forth. And there is a, a full-blown mobile app, which is very robust uh, to get at the same information. If we um, look at the uh, work documents, very similar um, to Jeremy's demonstration, he manages all of their um, meetings, I believe is what he showed. It's basically the same thing here. Um, we've got the, you know, in their case, the level 10 weekly meeting notes. We've got a standard um, template to create those notes have the ability to go back in and look at all the meeting notes from the previous meetings very quickly and easily. The other function that comes in ultra handy is you have the ability to search everything. And this is probably one of the key features of Monday is if I'm looking for something as simple as just show me anywhere where monday.com is mentioned, it's gonna quickly go to all the boards that I have access to. And as you can see, the first thing that it comes up with is a short short tutorial on everything you could do with Monday, um, as well as you know custom specific ones. Another example of work docs is if we go over to admin and accounting, they have the ability to basically go in and have video tutorials that they've created for the AR and AP process. So if they go in and they hire somebody new, which they recently did, day one is spent being able to go through those videos and finding them quickly on the AR and the AP process. So now I'm gonna jump over into the, um, another example of, of more, more of an automation. This is a client that uh, does web development and, and website support. They didn't want to. They didn't need or want to go with a full-blown um, ticket management system, and they did want it integrated with the rest of their Monday system, so that they have a side that will handle support requests like a website down, as well as development requests like, hey, we want a, a new design to our site. 
So we quickly built a board out that captures all the key information with uh, grouping them by the type of request that's being made. And we turned around and Monday has built into it a forms engine so that we can quickly go in and we can fill out a form. Passer. And as soon as I put this information in there, I have drop downs and I've got, uh, I need a major enhancement. Not going to add request summary and hit the files. What's basically going to happen is that is now going to appear on their task list. And in the background, low code, no code, we have created all these automations that in the background are going to do a variety of things. So they're going to notify that the person responsible for uh, major enhancements that that request has come in. They're going to provide them with all my contact information, and they're going to give them the ability uh, to work right within Monday to communicate with the client so that all email communications between the client and them are kept in line with the, with the loop and until it's actually closed. These automations, like I said, are super easy. You basically create a recipe. Um, there are many off-the-shelf recipes that they, they've actually already built. I'm just creating a custom one, but it's very simple. When this happens, do this, so on and so forth. So if we go back, we can actually see, uh, if we move down my information somewhere in there, this is Ami. We want to just try to wrap this up so yep. we keep the am I out, going. Am I out of time? Yeah, you're out of time. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't get any uh, warning. So um, if you need to get a hold of me, glad to uh, give you a more in-depth demo. And this is my contact information. If you want to try Monday, a trial 14-day, just go out to try.monday.com forward slash Coach Tom. Give me a yell. I'm glad to give you a little bit more in-depth training and even help you get started with your first uh, board. Thanks, Ami. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate it. And just want to keep things moving. Um, Libby, um, floor is yours. And we're excited to learn how you use Asana. So. All right. Awesome. So I know we're saving the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Q&A for after, but I'm just curious in the chat, um, for those of you that do use a project management tool, if you just want to let us know in the chat, like, yes, I use a project management tool. I'm just curious if any of you do use a project management tool and if you do use Asana. Um, I'm not going to go through as much of the like the templates and all of how we set it up. I'm going to specifically tell you a little bit about my journey, and some of my struggles, and then I'm going to show you a couple demos. So, uh, Libby, I hate to cut you off. Tom, would you mind just unsharing your screen? Your screen is still being shared. I have. Share my. Is this your yeah. screen? I'll Libby? share it now. Uh, no, for me to share. Sorry, guys. It's okay. All good. So the first thing I want to share is um, when it comes to project management and project management tools, it's been very, very challenging for me and the team. So I know that there are certain personality types uh, that do best with uh, their skill level with using project management tools and just project management in general. And it's been really hard for me. So uh, I have wanted to not use it. I've wanted to delegate it without having, with, you know, not delegate it very well. So it's been <laughs> strong. So I, I just want to be completely transparent that um, I'm not going to go over automations. I'm not going to go over anything super complex. I'm just going to show you how we're using it for content management and tell you the, the honest truth about what's been sticky for me. And then we can talk more about that with Q&A. So it's um, with our team, We've used Asana with employees and contractors, and uh, it's taken three years for it to get to where it is today. So uh, we use we have an SOP, um, just as was said earlier. I can't remember um, who said it, but yeah, you need to have some policies, procedures, and then someone's got to hold you to it. Um, one of the things I've learned when it comes to using a project management tool, specifically, you know, we are I'm talking about Asana today, uh, is that it, you have to be clear with who's responsible for what and who's accountable for what. 
because oftentimes in project management and with project management tools, people want to do it their own way, especially if we've got contractors and they come in and that's caused a lot of friction for us. And so friction meaning like, you know, we're not meeting deadlines, which drives me nuts. Uh, so it's really important that we're constantly enforcing the SOPs, going over the process and making sure that the employees and contractors are all on the same page. So just wanted to go over that quickly. I'm just going to check out the chat really quickly and see uh, what y'all are saying. Um, yeah, so I'm seeing that some of you use it for level 10 meetings. Um, all right, awesome. So I'm going to show you a tutorial now. And I did, for those of you that are interested in personality types, I'm seeing online that um, an ISTJ is like the best at project management. Um, I have found that certain personalities that aren't as detail-oriented really do struggle. So I'm, I am curious, do those of you do project management yourself or do you delegate it? And then who's in charge? Because the who question is always important to me. Like who's responsible for doing the project management and for holding people accountable? Is it you or is it someone else on your team? Um, so those to me are the important questions that I, I think will drive the rest of the conversation. So I'm going to show you how we use it for content management. Um, our business, we get all of our leads from content. So from YouTube, Instagram, podcasting. So obviously we rely heavily on a project management tool and using project management to get our content out. So this is just a one minute um, <clears throat> tutorial. This is how we are able to manage our YouTube assets with Asana. So we have a board dedicated to our YouTube channel. And then we have what these are called tasks. And each task has a description of the video. And then we have subtasks to help delegate for our team to post-produce each YouTube video. So we've got here uh, the rest of 2023. And then we have two film for quarter one of 2024. And that's 13 videos for once a week. And then we have every quarter has its own column. So this is the title of the video. Um, and then this would be the... Um, the script, we even link it to a Google um, Google Drive, to a Google document, a, a Google folder. And then we have, again, the subtask. So this is a template task that we just duplicate every time we make a new video. And it really helps us stay organized when it comes to creating and post-producing the YouTube assets for our channel. All right, so that's uh, that's how we do the content. And then I'll share with you Give me one second. Let me just reshare that. Sorry, I lost my screen there. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit of how we do fulfillment. So for content, we run our everything through Asana. And then when it comes to offboarding, I'll show you how we do it and then operations. So we've got our team here checking on failed payments. So we've got weekly check-ins. We have different boards as was shown earlier with the templates, which I'm not gonna go too into, um, but we've got tasks. Everything has to be assigned to a specific person. I think uh, was said earlier, um, I can't remember the first presenter had mentioned that uh, he doesn't like tasks assigned to him. I can totally relate to that. <laughs> um, so we have everything um, in boards assigned to team members. And then what we do here is like, I'll show you a particular client um, offboarding. So we have tasks set up for offboarding. So you can see here, it's a template. So everything's templatized. So we've got notes here linking in the task, the SOP, the particular program, we run masterminds, tutorials of how to do this. And then we've got the subtasks assigned to a specific person on the team in terms of what they're doing. So they're revoking access, confirming that surveys will, were filled out, et cetera. Yes, we could automate this better, um, but right now this is how we're running um, this tool. So we run operations through Asana, we run content management, uh, we run, uh, you know, fulfillment, making sure that we're also communicating about customer support tickets, et cetera. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm on seven minutes right now. So I'll stop and make sure that I'm good with our time. Awesome. Libby, thank you very much. Again, we're going to let the next two presentations go. And then we'll open it up for anyone's questions to anybody. Jervine, you're up. For hey, thank thanks, so Ami. Libby, that was great. I totally related to so much of uh, what you said. So thank you for the shares. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share with you usemotion.com. 
And, you know, this is sort of a hybrid. If it's like a, a base project management had a baby with Calendly is how I would describe it and, and task management. So the reason why I was attracted to it is because I found myself constantly having, you know, multiple calendars because I'm, I'm involved in a number of businesses as an investor and also working, um, helping them, you know, generate the first bit of revenue. So I have these different communities that I'm in involved with as with wearing different. So that's how I see use motion. Um, also, I can bring people into my projects that are from outside, like any of any other uh, platform. But the magic of use motion that I like so much is they automatically reschedule your to do list. So when you have a to do um, and I'll show you in just a moment, actually, let me go ahead. And one of the things I was going to show you my own, which I will, but I think most importantly, actually, use motion has really good examples right on their on their site. So. I thought, well, why should I reinvent the wheel, right? That's a good entrepreneur. Let's use what's out there. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, you guys see my screen, right? So one thing I really like is you can you can use your phone. You're on the road. How many times do you think, oh, I got to do something? And you want to quickly task. You don't have to open a whole thing. You can just quickly open your motion app, put in the task, and then you can either look at it later or you'll notice right here, you can decide on what the task is and then about how long you think it'll take. And then you could, is it hot? Like ASAP, immediate emergency. So you're con one of the, I'm sure I'm, I'm singing to the choir here when I say we're rescheduling our tasks on a regular basis, especially as the business moves faster and faster. So I'm finding that I'm constantly reprioritizing my day with what's really hot in that moment. And then I don't want to lose what else I've got going. Plus, we all massively underestimate how much time we have, right? And so what I love about this is not only if you can see here, you're writing your, your task, whatever it may be, or your project, you're deciding on the importance, the priority, and you've got a deadline, which is great. So when you do that, it automatically will load your calendar also because I'm involved in multiple people's calendars who can potentially uh, book my time. Um, I can give them links, but they don't have to see my whole schedule. So that's also really powerful. So it's like Calendly and it can look at multiple calendars. Also, you'll notice on projects, I'm gonna pull this up for a minute. On projects, can, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, everybody? Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, so you know you can you can have a project and you're gonna have multiple projects with a bunch of different tasks, and all of that will roll onto your calendar based on what you'll see here, which is high, medium, low priority. And let's say you've got a doctor's appointment that's private, it will schedule around that. So now you can have your personal calendar with your family. You can have three different business calendars and everything can come together and then get reprioritized based on what you will not move, what you want to have as something regular, as well as all your projects. Pretty awesome. Um, if I may say so, that's my editorial. And so they've got the Calendly piece. One thing I'm working from just outside Amsterdam in Europe right now, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, mostly. And so what I did was for all these meetings that I'm having for the next two weeks while I'm here is I'm sending a very special Calendly link for the times I'm available just for the next couple of weeks. So what's really nice is you can constantly switch up your links depending on your availability and you can have it customized and you can set your own focus time and your, your meeting time with your other meetings and decide on how important is that it, it, uh, is the call that you want to take. And it will automatically reschedule for yourself. So let me stop sharing this. And let me just open my own. Uh, not now. And give you a sense of how this looks. I'm kind of embarrassed. This is like showing my business lingerie, which is like backstage. I don't know. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be EO brave. Well, oh, come on. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So let's see. You've got. 
So I'm showing you right now the calendar page. So I've got multiple, I don't even have all my calendars in here yet. And then you can see I've got, you know, my task list, things I need to resolve, and then my schedule, and it's in different colors if I want. What's really cool is I can have, I've got all these different projects that I'm working on. Okay, even EO stuff, right? So if I'm opening up the EO stuff, I'm I'm the co-chair for sponsorship. So I've got the different um, EO projects that I'm I'm focused on, and I can put you know medium high. I'm I'm happy I put that. You guys can see this is very important to me. <laughs> and then I can sort this right, and then also um, I can I can actually add people, and I can also add tasks. So if somebody needs to help me, I can add that. So let's say today we had a really great uh, meeting with MailChimp, by the way, to be a nerve sponsor for the East Coast. And so I can relabel this as whatever I want. So I can put it as hot. Okay, let's just say. And then I can schedule these follow-ups during work hours. I can do a task reminder. My deadline was tomorrow. I got it done today. But now I'm going to reschedule it because we've got a call on the 26th. That was just literally from an hour ago and I'm still medium prioritizing it, but it's going to make sure that it gets on my calendar. So now I'm saving it and it's that easy. Now, if I wanted to, I could copy a link. Okay. I can also create a template out of it. Uh, okay. So this is like super, I like that it's super easy. It's very intuitive. And Libby, I'm a little bit like you. I'm, I really don't like having to work in this situation. But now that I've done it, I'm so much happier as a human being because now I'm, I know in the back of my mind, I'm not losing things. So I can go straight to a task list. There are some tasks that do not, that do not have an assignment. They're like random, but I need to get them, give them an assignment. Or I can go in and um, go into my projects and I can bring people into my projects and, and also track those people. It's super, super visual and very easy. So, I mean, that's really it in a nutshell. I mean, this isn't rocket science, but I, I really look at this as more of a combination of task management, Calendly, managing projects and managing tasks all in one. And it's super easy. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably better for small teams. I don't know if it, if I would say, Tom, it has the extendability of a Monday or an Asana. But, you know, if you've got a lot of things that you're doing on your own and you want to track that and you've got multiple activities, I think it's great. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you so much. Wes, the floor is yours, buddy. Awesome. Thank you. Let me share my screen here. So I'm going to share with you a, a simple platform called Trello, and I'll show you a couple different variations of how this is applicable to me. Um, just full disclosure, at some point we had over 2000 clients. So I've used Zoho, Jira, Zendesk, HubSpot, Salesforce, Teamwork, you named it. We've gone through everything. Uh, this, can everybody see my screen? Good. Okay. So this is Trello. You go to Trello.com. I don't even know if this is a paid version or not. My goal in life now is to not be attached to board. So I just had my team throw me on. This one, Heartland Electric, this is a real client. And I'm also going to show you how we use this for our level 10. And I'll show you how quickly you can create a board. So for me, I'm all about simplicity. I think the context for Trello is, think of a three and a half by five index card. And I'm going to show you what that means. So this is an actual client. So these are all headings of like steps in your process. So we have next meeting agenda, to-dos, training requests and progress, automation ideas, completed things that we're doing. The reason why I love this, you can move this stuff around. You can add, create, create templates based on what you've done. Um, so under this to-do, I can create, I can add a quick title for this card. So I'll just go test one. I add it. I can click on it. I can give the description of what this is. I can write the activity. So I can add anybody on this board. So for us, there's, you click members, you can see who's attached to this board. So if I want John Bowerman to do something, I can attach him there. I can detach him. If I want to notify somebody who's on this board, I can call their name out and say, hey, do this, whatever that is. It's really easy to use. Uh, the other benefit is this is very, very mobile friendly. Um, so 
everything's tracked here. You can move stuff around. I love it for client work because as the team's working with clients, they can see all the to-dos. If it's not on this board, it doesn't exist and it's not complicated. So we'll attach our clients on these boards as well. So going back to my workspaces, I'll show you a little bit more complex one, uh, which is a level 10. So we run on EOS. So we set up our weekly agenda, Segway, Rock, Scorecard. You know, you can go in here. We put resources in. Uh, here's a link to our scorecard so you can link everything to it. Whoops, I just lost it. Oh, here we go. Sorry. So you can link attachments to it. You can link. Uh, I guess I am on the free version. It keeps kicking me out. I apologize. I won't go in and mark. So again, you create all the card files. We have a to-do list, IDS, yeah, our next EOS session. So we keep things very organized and very, very simple. So the other thing I like about this, it's very collaborative. Also, when I, I use Gmail for my mail, when I get emails that come in, there's a Google Chrome extension that says add to Trello. You click that button and you can add that to any board you have. So if you work with an administrative assistant or somebody, you can just literally push that email to your Trello board and you can get as crazy as you want in terms of building automations, follow up. I'm a real simple guy. I just don't want to lose anything. And for me, if it's not on the Trello board, it doesn't exist. Um, so again, pretty simple stuff, pretty intuitive. I'm not super process detail oriented and it works really, really well for me. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you to the, all five of you for great presentations. Interesting. They're all the same, but they're all different. And now what we really wanted to do is open up the floor for questions. Um, there have been some questions coming in about if people are using Microsoft Teams with these apps or if Teams become obsolete. And if anyone has any thoughts on that, we'd love to hear. I, I see Teams as... I see Teams as in addition to, not instead of any of these tools. And, and I know Monday is directly integrated with Office 365, so it's got integration with Teams. Um, that is one thing I will point out, no matter which one of these that you implement, it's the traditional challenge of software implementation. There's going to be some overlap and there's going to be some confusion on which tool do I use when? And you've got to clearly articulate that within your organization. But I don't think Teams does what any of these do and vice versa. I don't think that any of these eclipse Teams. Ali, would you like to go ahead and uh, run through the Q&A and share and ask the questions? So we do have a question in the Q&A. This attendee's asked, saying, we love Trello. It gets cumbersome when multiple users from our company create their own free Trello. Is there a way to merge boards to a company platform? If you're asking me, I think that there is a way to actually merge the boards together. Um, the success we've had is always be in control, and we set it up for our client, if that makes sense. That's what you're asking for. So you just said that they use Trello, but now they use Planner instead. I think Tim Reddick said that. Um, Tim, you want to um, just tell us what um, what you mean by that? Uh, yeah, Microsoft 365 includes a tool called Planner, which has a very similar Kanban interface. Um, and it's part of 365 and integrates with Teams. So you can take a look at that. Uh, we used to use Trello and now we use Planner instead. So it doesn't have all the features of Monday uh, when you have more advanced things, but for basic project management, Planner works works pretty well. And I could, if you do this again in another month or something, I can demo that. So that's all I got. Has it been moving from Trello to Planner? Has it been pretty seamless or difficult? It, it was very seamless because it's almost the exact same interface. You know, it's one of those things where Microsoft copies an existing well-loved product uh, with just the key functionality that you need. So, yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, if you're using Teams, then it's a great move. Exactly. Yep. Right. 
Um, um, Ali, go through the questions. I'm sorry, I jumped in. So. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we do have one saying, does Calendly Emotion sync with iCal? I think that one was already asked. Sorry, I did have a place once I shared my screen, of course. Yeah, it does. I answered it. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, it syncs with any, you know, off-the-shelf calendar. Perfect. Another one saying, wondering about Monday's new CRM versus HubSpot. Great question. I've actually implemented the CRM for three or four clients now. It is not a HubSpot. It is a great CRM for somebody that has no CRM that wants to start out and and get going. Um, they are going to be pouring a lot of resources into developing it more this year. Things like email campaigns, which they don't currently have. They have the ability to send out mass emails, but no ability to have the detail that um, that HubSpot has, the ability to create those workflows and if this, then that. None of that's in there, but the basic... Um, all the basic things that you would expect from a CRM, they've got, it's very low cost and it's very, you can quickly implement it, which is why a lot of people have kind of jumped on board. And of course it's directly integrated with the work management pro product that I showed you today. And if, again, anybody offline, if you want to get a more in-depth uh, demo on the CRM, uh, HubSpot, I still think is, if you can afford it, it's, it's top notch. It's the best. CRM out there, in my opinion. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. We do have another one coming in. Have you figured out how to best manage inbox for now? Oh, sorry. Have you figured out how to best manage inbox? For now, I create rules and send them to multiple inboxes. For example, inbox news for the flurry of news I get every day. Anyone use a different strategy? And I can reread re that. I hardly understand what that question means. Inbox for what? Just their general email inbox? Maybe whoever asked that question, if they want to raise their hand and they can clarify. Yeah, John, if you want to unmute and I can. Yes, this is for general inbox, he said. I, um, yeah. you know, obviously there's nothing. I don't use ClickUp for that, but I do use SaneBox. I don't know if you've looked into that. That helps. Um, It kind of automatically puts it into different inboxes and allows me to easily create um, automations to put them in a different folders. I mean, Google has those capabilities too, but I find SaneBox does it faster, easier, and and better. So you could look in a SaneBox if you haven't checked that out. It, it saves me, it sends me a, a notification every, I think, month saying I saved whatever, you know, 72 hours by using SaneBox or something. So you could check that out. That's helpful. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think you had it on your blog a couple different times where you hired your own secretary or administrative assistant to manage your inbox, and then you had OCD and you had to jump back into it. I have the same thing is, you know, you get overnight, you get uh, hundreds of different emails and you can subscribe, you can block them. But, you know, right now I create multiple inboxes. So as, you know, Wall Street Journal comes in, it goes to, instead of coming to a main inbox, it comes into inbox hyphen news and so all the news shows up into one inbox so i don't have this inbox that's has you know 200 new messages overnight so anyway i'm just i think you threw that question out here amy a few months ago or weeks last hi, month too so. hi john how are you Great. i'm good how are you i'm good you so great anybody else Allie? All right. Any chance for a round two on CRM and customer pipeline management? That's a super cool idea, Rachel. We'll post that on the message boards and maybe we'll try to re replicate this for, that's a great idea. I like that idea. It All would right. be really good. I, I think this is a super interesting um, test in um, many of us here, not all of us are, 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 are in EO and it's a super interesting um, little test in sort of the user um, content and expertise coming in from our own community versus paid speakers. I really like it. So awesome. Um, what else? Anybody else ever should also feel free to raise their hands if they have any questions or thoughts. Yeah, like Ami said, if you would prefer to ask your question verbally, just raise your hand and I can grant you access to talk. 
We do have this QR code. Through this QR code, you can connect with us. And we are also offering a recording of today's session. So if you wanted a recap, you can also request that recording through this QR code. Awesome. We do have someone saying that they loved this user-driven platform. So that's great. We love all of your feedback. Another, we do have another question right. coming in. This one's asking, how do you run a meeting using Asana? So for our panelists who did share their experience with Asana, I think that was Libby. Yeah, um, sorry, can you repeat that question? How do you run a meeting using Asana? Yeah, well, um, I, I think that the, uh, I can't remember the last presenter's name. He showed a, a really good example of uh, how he's using a board for level 10 meetings. For us, uh, we actually just link the meetings. We're using Google Drive. We're not using Asana right now to run our um, team meetings. So we're not we're not doing that yet. But in, in the future, that would be great. We're using uh, Google Drive. So our, um, yeah, I think the question just for us, it's capacity and priority. And we have a functioning system for our team meetings. So the priority now is, you know, other revenue generating things, not optimizing what's already working for our team meeting management process. See. Anybody have anything else? We're going to go in once. Uh, anyone know of a reliable, reasonable source for MS training, Microsoft Teams training? Does anyone know that? Microsoft Teams training or setup? Kevin Gilbert, you've raised your hand. Jump on in, buddy. Kevin? Did we lose Kevin? Kevin, what do you got, buddy? Hi, thank you so much. Um, we have Asana, very, very incipient, and uh, but we're on EOS. And whether Asana or any other of the programs, how do you run? an L10 or a weekly meeting, quarterly meeting. What does that exactly look like? Is it like we have open it to everybody? Everybody completes their portion of the meeting? That's the part that I'm not understanding. What does it mean running a meeting via Asana or Trello or any of the others? Yes. Yeah, so in my example, in, in the category with the cards, we, we run off EOS level 10. So like Segway... IDS, to do's, all that. We keep it organized in the agenda. So for scorecard in there, when we open the scorecard, we put a link to a Google spreadsheet where we keep track of all the KPIs in our scorecard. So everything's organized. So yeah, people have a level of responsibility to fill out prior to that meeting, but we just have that first row to keep the level 10 meeting in context. So we put time around it and then utilize the rest of the access point to manage our IDS and our to-dos and everything else in our parking lot. So we sort of operate from within the level 10 IDS board. It's pretty simple to do. And I put my information in there. Uh, I'd be happy to jump on more, you know, intimately and show you exactly step-by-step -step how, how we do it and what works for us. I appreciate that. Thank you. So on, on monday.com and Asana as well, I'm familiar with capability in both. You'd have a template for the level 10 meeting that has the agenda items. In Monday, you would create a new work doc uh, based upon that template. So it already had the agenda. And you could decide if you want all the participants in that meeting to update it throughout the week and put things on the IDS or the headlines, or you can lock it down if you don't want others in the organization to see what's, what's going on with the leadership team. And I believe Asana has almost the identical capability. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, ideas, thoughts, suggestions? Spit it out. You can raise your hand or just put it in the chat. We did have another question coming in the chat box. This one's asking, from what I can tell, Motion or Trello is best for the individual who has multiple projects. Is this correct? I, I mean, I, I think best is subjective. 
to me, Trello is just really simple. I think what everybody showed is really great, but to me, it seems very complicated and there's a lot of moving parts. To me, Trello is just very dumb, very basic, very easy for me to manage. Uh, so if that's your thing, that's why I would recommend Trello. But they all seem like they're, I don't, I don't know which one would be best. So one one thing I would throw out again, I've, I've used Trello in the past when I had a couple IT companies. It really relies on the Kanban approach to project management, which agile software development marketing companies all use. And if you like the idea of moving cards through the process, um, then and Trello is really easy to use, uh, but it is Kanban focused. So if you like waterfall approaches, traditional project management, I don't believe Trello has that, but it's all the it's also its best feature. Um, on the Monday.com side, you can do either or. You could do traditional waterfall, or you can do Kanban approach. We do have another one coming in. For EOS L10s, is there a reason not to use a platform built for running business operating systems such as 90 IO other than cost? I'll, I'll, grab, yeah. I'll grab that one because I've used 99.io. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem with the, the ones that are specifically designed by EOS is they only manage the EOS type stuff. So it's a tool for the leadership team, but it's not going to be extended throughout the organization for task and project management and automation. That's where those fall short, is that they're all very focused on just the EOS things that you track. Anything else? I do not see any other questions in the chat or in the Q&A. We do have an attendee now raising their hand. Great. And then they, then they unraised it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was trying to find it. Yep. No yeah. further questions at the moment. Awesome. Well, folks, it's one o'clock. We've, I think, had a full and terrific hour. I think it's been great. Um, we will post this recording and share it and certainly consider uh, continuing this format on other topics such as CRM or pipeline management, uh, because I think it's been really, really interesting and helpful to the community. So uh, thank you so much for joining us and um, uh, we'll be back with other topics. We'll start generating some interest in them and uh, let's do some more user-generated content. I love it. So. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Be well.